My name's Alex Landau from the Denver Justice Project, and I just wanted to clear up a few misconceptions that I have heard about in our communities recently when referencing cases of law enforcement violence, uh, cultural patterns and practices of abuse by police and sheriff deputies against Denver residents. So criminal charges or the possibility to indict has absolutely nothing to do with the internal discipline process and internal affairs investigation. And neither one of those have anything to do with eligibility for a civil settlement. The three of these things are not synonymous at all. When a criminal investigation takes place, it is totally separate from an internal affairs investigation, which is specifically focused on whether or not policy or procedural violations occurred the maximum discipline that could be administered would be termination. You could lose your job. And then we have civil settlements, which are a totally separate issue as well. You could see a case where somebody gets brutally beaten or killed. The district attorney decides not to file criminal charges against the officer or deputy. The executive director of safety decides not to discipline an officer or a deputy but then we see a very large monetary settlement take place as a result of the behavior that these uniformed personnel chose to engage in. The thing about our current discipline process, in Denver we call it the discipline matrix. If the executive director of safety decides to fire, suspend, demote um, a, uni a, a police officer or a sheriff deputy, the appeals process then kicks in. Appeals are uh, incubated in the police unions here in Denver. Um, one union in particular that I'm referencing is the Police Protective Association, the PPA. The other union that I'm refer uh, referencing is uh, Lodge 27, Fraternal Order of Police, which is the Sheriff's Union. And if you're a member of these unions, the union can appeal direct discipline handed down from any superior. And that makes Chief White, Executive Director of Safety Stephanie O'Malley, and Sheriff Pat Furman less effective because it makes it very difficult for them to actually successfully discipline officers. And in this case, officers or deputies usually get lost in this appeals process. And in many cases, it can take years. There are multiple layers and moving parts when it comes to disciplining uniform personnel, and it's very difficult to understand uh, for the average community member uh, if you haven't had to live through it or if you haven't read the text page for page in each discipline process. So what we currently are trying to do is do away with this current discipline process. It's ineffective. It makes the people in positions of authority less effective and it ensures that dangerous officers or deputies in most cases will end up back at their post in their jobs policing the streets overseeing the jails and that makes community vulnerable and susceptible to violence so we encourage you to check out our link um, donate if you can if you can't please share it but Denver deserves a justice system and a discipline process that doesn't allow and perpetuate the damage and pain, violence and murder that the uniformed personnel who are subjected to go through this process continually administer, let alone allow them back at their jobs so they can simply do it again. Thank you.